Hey, pre-calc, this is going to be a little bit more with limits. The next couple of days are going to be some limit applications, as I've titled the lessons. And this is really at the heart of what you will learn if you are to take a course in calculus next year. <clears throat> so I would say that, you know, if you, if you think about the course AP calculus at Fairport High School, about half of it relates to this topic right here, which is the topic of finding what's called a derivative. Maybe you've even heard of that term before, but essentially what does a derivative boil down to? It is the slope of a tangent line to a given point on a curve. So it doesn't sound all that complicated, and I hope that over the next few days, we're gonna use some concepts of things that we're already familiar with and be able to apply them and see how it all relates to the study of calculus here. But just so we get a little bit of a quick visual as to what we mean by that, here's what I've drawn for you. I drew kind of a random curve, I've labeled it as f of x here. And I've shown you that if I pick some random points along that curve there, the tangent line is a line that just touches the, the point that I'm tangent at once. And maybe that word sounds familiar from other contexts like uh, circles and geometry or something like that. But tangent is the implication is that at the point that you wanna be tangent at, the line would only hit once at that point. So if we're talking about the concept of slope, well, slope is something you've calculated for a long time since probably as early as middle school now, where we're just gonna find the difference in y's um, over the difference in the x values. And just symbolically, you might see that represented as change in y over change in x with those delta symbols there. Notation for derivatives. In general, the derivative of this function f of x would be denoted by f prime of x. You can see on the graph here I've labeled where x equals one right there. So f prime of one, what that represents is that's the slope of this tangent line at x equals one. So just kind of a quick little bit about notation that we'll see come up over the next few days. f prime of x is pretty common that we'll see, but f prime of one represents the slope specifically at x equals one. So how does this apply to limits? Well, the problem that we're gonna run into is to find slope, you really need two points. So when we're talking about a line that's tangent to a curve, if I wanna find the slope and eventually the equation of the line that's tangent at this point P, the problem with that is that we can't apply the slope formula. We only have one coordinate point. So the way that we're gonna get around that is we're going to find the slope of something called a secant line. So the secant line connects two points. So you're gonna try and choose a point that's pretty close by. I'll call this point Q over here. And if you connect point P and point Q in this fashion, you can say, yeah, well, the slope of the line that connects P and Q is pretty close to the slope of just the tangent line there. And we could say, all right, well, that will be a, a good enough approximation then. The issue then becomes though, well, is this actually gonna be close enough such that I can make a good guess or could I be an even better guesser than what we have here? I wish I had some more colors here. What is this color? Purple looks good. I'm actually gonna call this point Q1. What if I moved like way down here and called that the point Q2? Wouldn't the slope between Q2 and P be even a better and more accurate representation of just the slope that connected Q1 and P. So the whole idea here would be, we wanna take this point Q and kind of slide it as close as we can get to point P, such that we can still find the slope between two given points, but we can get really, 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 really close to point P and then calculate that slope with a, with a fair amount of accuracy there. So this is where that limit concept comes into play. I'm gonna write it as the limit as point Q approaches point P. Of the slope between those points would then eventually equal and approximate the slope of the tangent line, which is what I'm trying to find. So I hope that concept makes sense that if I take point Q and kind of, kind of like keep sliding it towards point P and calculating those slopes, it's gonna get really, closer and closer and closer to the actual slope of the tangent line. So we're gonna put that into practice with the function y equals x squared. So if we take a look at y equals x squared, so let's find the slope of the uh, tangent line to the curve at x equals three. So let's go ahead and just recall what our good old friend y equals x squared looks like. 
let's say we define this to be where x equals three is. In fact, we know that since it's on the curve x squared, three squared is nine. So we know that this is the point three nine. So how are we gonna find the slope of the tangent line, this line right here? Well, we're gonna choose a point that's pretty close by. Let's start by choosing a point that's just a half unit away. What if we choose X to be 3.5? Well, the first thing you have to do is you actually have to find the Y value that goes with that then, right? So plug it into your function X squared, the 3.5 squared is 12.25. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the slope between this point and this point, And we're gonna see what that comes out to be and see, you know, hey, is that a decent approximation? What do we think about the slope of that tangent line then? So the slope of the secant line would be the change in y over the change in the x values. Now, however you best want to type that in. If you want to do fancy fractions, alpha y equals, that's not a bad idea, just so you don't have to do parentheses around the top and bottom. 12.25 minus 9 is on top, 3.5 minus 3 on the bottom. I got that the slope that connects those is 6.5. But in actual reality, can we get a lot closer than 3.5? I mean, in this context, what if I said, let's choose 3.1? Let's see how sliding that point just a little bit closer to x equals 3 changes that slope approximation for that tangent line. So right now, the slope of the secant 6.5, I don't know, is the actual slope then, is it 6? Is it 5? Is it something less than that? I'm not sure. So what's 3.1 squared? 3.1 squared is 9.61. That's a pretty different y value than when I got 3.5 squared there. So 9.61. Okay, so to find the slope here, you would do the change in y over the change in x. So 9.61 minus 9 over 3.1 minus 3. So if you type that in, fancy fraction if you want, I got... Not too much of a change here, but the slope of this secant line would now be 6.1. So if you want to try just one more case, I mean, why don't we just get really, really close and try like 3.01. That's really, really close to x equals 3. And see if that gets us an even better approximation for the slope of my tangent line. So 3.01 squared is 9.0601. Okay, so if we go ahead and calculate the slope there, the change in y over the change in x, we won't be too surprised, I don't think, to find that now the slope is 6.01. So in all said and done, if the slope of these secant lines are getting gradually in, uh, closer and closer and closer to a value of, hopefully you would say six here, we're gonna say that the slope of the tangent line must be six. Now I'll tell you, there's definitely a more definitive way of coming across this answer other than getting really, really, really close, right? It's this concept of evaluating a limit. That's what a limit is doing. What am I getting closer and closer to? So we'll do that a little bit more tomorrow, but until we really understand the concept, let's just use that. We know the slope of the tangent line is six. And the last part says, we'll write the equation of the tangent line at three, nine. So in other words, write the equation of this dotted line that I drew in. We know the slope is 6, and we know that it contains the point 3, 9. So I'm going to, for every single example, use point slope form, which remember is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Because in almost every example, you will have a point and you will have a slope, so that makes the most sense to me. So it's going to be, in this case, y minus 9 equals the slope of 6 times x minus 3. Okay, let's just do a few more of these for practice. I think you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. And then that's what the homework is uh, going to be based off of here. All right, in the next example, we have the function x cubed. We want to find the equation of the tangent line at 1, 1. You don't have to draw a picture of this, but I think it helps to kind of get a visual here. x cubed, as a function, looks like this. The point 1, 1 might be right about there. So we're trying to find the equation of this line that is tangent to the graph at that point. Okay. 
Don't mind my dinner cooking in the background, by the way. Mrs. All's doing a great job over there. If you can hear things going off in the kitchen. Okay, so we've got the tangent line going here. What we need to do is we have to pick a point really close by, find the slope of that secant line. When I say really close by, let's just as a default go like one one hundredth away from the value of x that we're trying to find the slope at. So if I go one one hundredth away from there, what's the y value? 1.01 .01 cubed is 1.030301. So now that I have that coordinate that's super close to this point right here, we're going to find the slope between those. Over the change in the x values, okay. So the slope of the secant line that's super close by is going to be 1.030301 minus 1. Over 1.01 minus 1, I got that the slope is 3.0301. And since we're so close by to this point right here, I can say with a fair amount of confidence that the slope of the tangent line is going to have a slope of 3. By the way, if you were to pick, let's say, x equals 2, because if you ask my kindergartner, is 2, you know, pretty close to 1? I mean, yeah, it's the number that comes right after it, right? But if you were to pick x equals 2, 2 cubed is 8. So the slope that connects those points would be 8 minus 1 over 2 minus 1, which is the slope of 7. And notice how drastically different that is than this slope that we really are trying to approach here, which is the slope of 3. So I would say that going one one hundredth away for now is pretty safe, but if you go one whole unit away from what you're looking for here, it's not gonna probably return something that is gonna be accurate enough for us to make that prediction about the slope of the tangent line. Slope of the tangent line is three. We want to contain the point one one. So the equations y minus one equals three times x minus one. Okay, so the end goal is once you find the slope of the tangent line, so then write the equation of the tangent line as well. We'll do two more just like it. I'll let you try the last one on your own. The next one, f of x equals three minus x squared. We wanna find the equation at the point two negative one. So at x equals two, that's what we're trying to find the, the tangent line at. Pick a value one one hundredth away. Could I have chosen 1.99? Absolutely, right? You would get the same desired result if you go 1 100th just to the left of that point. So let's see, if I plug that into the function, we have to do three minus 2.01 squared. So the y value on this function is negative 1.0401. All right, so now that I have my two points, I can calculate the slope. The slope would be change in y, so when I subtract that negative one, I might as well just make it a plus one so I don't confuse myself. The bottom would be 2.01 minus two. The slope of the secant line in this one is going to be the following. Let's see. Negative 1.0401 plus one is the numerator. Bottom is 2.01 minus two. So I got that the slope is negative 4.01. Is it possible to have that negative slope? Absolutely, right? Here's what the graph would look like, three minus x squared. We're trying to find the slope at the point two negative one down here. So notice how if I, were, if I were to draw a tangent line at that point, certainly the slope would be negative. And what I'm gonna say in this case is that the slope of the tangent line should be negative four based on the fact that this is the slope that I got for my secant line. All right, the slope is negative four and it goes through the point two negative one. The equation is y plus one equals negative four times x minus two. Okay, one more I'm gonna do.